Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Bruce Sports Report. Without you guys, you know this does not work. Um, today is a bittersweet day. <clears throat> Willie Brown, Hall of Famer, died today on the same day that it's the one-year anniversary of Amari Cooper coming to the Dallas Cowboys. And make no mistake about it, <clears throat> that may end up being the move that we look back on that may be kind of like the Herschel Walker trade. The Dallas Cowboys had one asset at that time, and that was Herschel Walker. <clears throat> and the Minnesota Vikings, thinking that they were just one player away, Gave up a king's ransom for Herschel Walker. Didn't work out for them, but it sure worked out for the Cowboys. And that move propelled the Cowboys to becoming the dynasty of the 90s. And we look back now, and you got to admit, <laughs> you get a playmaker like that, that first round draft pick, that was money in the bank right there. He's young, he's hungry, and he wants to be a Dallas Cowboy for life. And he's definitely got chemistry with our quarterback. Now the Dallas Cowboys may be able to do something that has not happened in 15 years. And that is when back-to-back division titles and we still got a long way to go we got nine games left anything can happen but I don't believe the Redskins can do it I don't believe the Giants can do it sorry you two maybe the Eagles can right the ship but I don't know right now it seems like every day you get another story and something else that keeps growing this um, Lane Johnson talking about guys showing up late and the coach guaranteeing victories that locker room is cratering people pointing fingers at others you're hearing more rumors about Carson Wentz as being the diva I mean you know I don't really think the Eagles I, I think this is one of those times that things could just kind of get rolling like a snowball going downhill it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it implodes that's not to say that the Cowboys have everything sewn up. But I want you to think about the NFC East. The NFC East used to be the beast in the NFL. From 82 to 95, oh my God, Super Bowl champions were coming out of there. Three for the Redskins, two for the Giants, three for the Cowboys. Eagles, not so much. But the thing that's been crazy is since 2003, 2004, and actually, Eagles, I'll give you credit, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, you guys dominated division. You had four division crowns in a row. But since that time, every year, it's always been a different division winner. Even after Super Bowl victories, it's always been somebody else. We know this because, well, every time we've won it under Tony Romo, we didn't win it the next year. And even after the Giants won the Super Bowl, they didn't come back and win it. The Eagles, they won the Super Bowl. They didn't come back and do it. But right now, the Dallas Cowboys have three victories in our division out of three games. We have actually dominated our division thus far. And hopefully that will continue. Now the great thing is, is well, the team's going to get some rest. Get a chance to heal up. The Redskins, well, they play on Thursday night against Minnesota. 
the Eagles and Giants, they have games this weekend. I'm tired. And we will be home relaxing, healing, and getting ready for a drive. What people will say, even though we are 16-5 and five in our division over the last three and a half years, because Cowboy fans expect perfection in everything, and if you're not perfect, then you're a bum and get him out of here. You, you guys are kind of like Michael, not my son, Michael Anthony. Somebody said, no, I'm not even going to say that. But anytime you are not perfect, you are labeled a bum in Dallas. In order to get to Super Bowls, you got to at least be good in your division. You've got to learn to walk before you can run. The Cowboys are learning how to walk. They've got a lot of young talent. they got some guys with the right attitude. <laughs> and their locker room is not cratering. These are all positive things. And the thing that is great about this is, when you look back at the 90s team, you look at the draft, where they drafted... Well, they drafted a whole group of guys from Michael Irvin to Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith. Those guys got to grow up together as a team. And that's where you see this repeat happening. A lot of times people will tell me, you're an idiot, you don't know Jack. But I remember sitting here telling Philly, I said, Philly, listen man, you've got one of the oldest teams out there. I said, you got problems in that locker room with Carson Wentz. You're an idiot. And I said, Carson Wentz, listen. I said, buddy, Carson Wentz doesn't have career-defining wins. He said, oh, we got that Ram win. Okay, all right, so you got that one. But I said, as he told me, they were going to be 13-3. and three. Maybe they can be 12-4. and four. That they had problems. Hmm. Right now, I was kind of spot on. Even though everybody else was saying, <laughs> best team in football, best roster, best coach. Yeah. But I said, when you look at the parallels of where this team was versus where the 90s team was as well, year four is the year that Troy Aikman stepped up his game. First couple of years, we weren't sure he was the franchise quarterback or not. Year four was when they won it all. And you look at things like bringing Charles Haley to the Cowboys, which took it to another level. You can see that with bringing in an Amari Cooper. It's just on offense, not on the defense. And you can see these parallels. See, make no mistake about it, your team has an identity. And the Dallas Cowboys, as much as we think about, you know, Roger the Dodger, you know, he had Tony Dorsett. He also had Drew Pearson. That's the triplets. But with that, they also had a great defense. Think about New England right now. New England has a great quarterback. But they also have a hell of a defense, too. Think about that Super Bowl last year. It wasn't the offense that won it for it. It was that defense. And so as you go through the 90s, you had Troy Aikman, one of the most accurate passers in the history of football. You had Emmitt Smith, the all-time leading rusher. You had Michael Irvin, the playmaker, and a number one defense. We've had pieces of this stuff but never really put together the complete package. The closest we got was 2014 when you had Dez at his peak and you had DeMarco Murray leading the NFL in rushing and you had Tony Romo healthy. The defense, 19th rank, but they were good at taking the ball away. And that's the difference right there. If we had a little bit better defense that could have stopped Aaron Rodgers, 
Maybe we got the Super Bowl. Though. I don't know. But what I look at when I see my team right now is I see the triplets. I see the dominating offensive line. And I see a defense, although it hasn't shown it that much yet, that has the potential to be a great defense. If we can put all those pieces together this last nine games and into the playoffs, you got as good a chance as anybody else out there. We'll find out if I'm really an idiot or not, or if maybe I got a few things right. Well, that's all I got to say about that. It's time for me to turn out the lights here. Is I got to get up and go to work in the morning. Hope you guys had a great night, a great day, and I'll see you first thing in the morning with Don't Sleep on the Dallas Cowboys. Have a great night. <laughs> Damn, them eagles suck. <laughs> oh, EDP's crying. Philly 500 won't even do a video. Fly. <laughs> Woo, boy. <laughs>